Oh, good morning. And uh, first of all, uh, let me show you what I couldn't show you yesterday due to the flash authorizations and whatever. Flash is one of the seven evils of the world uh, because uh, it never works and now it creates only problems. But uh, um, okay, right now, uh, just to show you a, a little bit of, of example of how, how um, a wireframing tool works, okay? Uh, just to show you how uh, yesterday I, I commented on uh, how si how more simple it is uh, to create a mockup rather than a visual design really so um, this is an example for uh, balsamic which is one of the most used tools but uh, one, one of the questions yesterday is uh, what which tools should we use it's up to you okay we are not enforcing any specific tool uh, for uh for for this course so maybe if you are more familiar with one tool or you prefer another one you're free to to experiment and to try them out so this is just uh, seen as an example so if we want to create a new mockup i'm creating that in, in this project then we'll see the existing ones uh, it will open the editor and uh, you see that you have a, a blank uh, page where you can draw your wireframe your prototype and you have a lot of components in this uh, library here it's uh, right now it's on the top or in, in some cases on the left uh, you have a lot of different elements uh, some are more basic uh, so maybe the individual button and some are already more complete like a dialogue window or confirmation window or a chart and so on so in this case uh, all the elements are uh, in the, um, divided in categories so big elements for example big uh, all sorts of buttons, buttons, Dropbox, and so on. Uh, common elements. You see that some elements are in more than one category. For example, the button, of course, is both in buttons and in common. So it's easy to, to find uh, uh, the element that you are searching. Containers, all the tabbed windows uh, with tabs on the top, tabs on the left, uh, windows, uh, um, areas, regions, okay. All the form elements text box buttons radio buttons uh, uh, and and other element that you use usually you know, slider windows uh, uh, slider buttons uh, um, spinners and so on uh, ios there's not much here in, the, in this free version layout elements uh, that are very similar to the containers but they, all, they also contain dividers they also contain scroll bars uh, markup elements uh, so these are just for there should not be part of the mockup uh, rather than they are for m making annotations on top of that so if you the sticky the yellow sticky note saying okay beware that this uh, of this note of this behavior so something that you put on top of the of the mockup uh, they should not be intended as uh, an element on the user interface but something that you use to comment media players so maps uh, video audio something like that uh, project assets is empty because it's something that you can upload for your own projects so you, you can upload your own images your own uh, elements uh, and uh, site assets is the same text uh, all the text elements here the title uh, hidden title uh, and an icon with a name uh, table a uh, short text uh, uh, with a link uh, uh, short text uh, of, of a couple of lines uh, more lines here so different shapes so that in many cases you just have to pick the element you need uh, and so I don't know I'm creating a web application so uh, I just need a, there's also a, a search function there that will allow you to select uh, a browser window you just click it and it appears here you can resize it already has all the elements okay you, you don't need to put uh, the home the arrow and the so on it's already there you want to put a title so it's a text uh, text uh, line of text okay they can you can put here and make it bigger and you see it's not just image resizing okay it's reflowing in a way to give you the impression of a line of text okay it's the title of your and if you want really to write a specific test you can of course uh, uh, so in this case uh, it will be a, a label or string of text uh, where did it go here okay so you can write uh, your own text uh, 
your own text but for user testing it's always better to write a real actual text or just a placeholder don't uh, uh, insert um, programmers placeholders no no uh, the quick brown fox uh, jumps over the lazy dog or uh, another sentence that makes no sense because otherwise users will try to fix or understand that the kind of context okay uh, in, in it's usually when you're as a programmer you just write some text here okay it's it reminds you that maybe we may we make it larger so every element has some property window where you can change all the aspects so some text here as a programmer it's just a reminder for you okay sooner or later we will need to define exactly what text is in there for a user tester it will try to understand the, the meaning of no, some so with typos is even better uh, some the user will try to infer a meaning to that text so try always if you don't know just don't put any placeholder just put a space uh, that, that describes that there will be text there so just small small tricks and um, okay you can put all the elements there uh, maybe we picked some of the already designed ones just to have a better look for example I don't want to say this one no, here we had a table no so tables are always time-consuming because you need a lot of work to make them right uh, in this case for example the table the content of the table is just uh, text with a minimum level of syntax so actually we have the different names with co separated by commas and all these commas make uh, the columns automatically so it's something similar to you know how you make uh, tables in markdown where you just put the bars uh, but it's even simpler here so it doesn't have all the syntax requirements all the dashes and so on and uh, uh, and automatically it will create uh, all the rows the columns and so on the uh, you can customize of course the colors uh, you can put uh, or remove the scroll bar for example with just a click on the properties you can have or not the uh, alternate alternate cor um, colors you can have or not the border around that and so on so you have a, a lot of uh, uh, controls there which of course you don't have all the specific controls uh, that you could would have if you want to create a real table by hand so when you really need say okay but uh, okay this this should be right aligned okay it can be done but uh, maybe i need to join two cells uh, to make it larger or to make a line disappear or something more specific and you are trying to design the interaction with that table then you need to go to high level prop uh, to high fidelity prototypes make it with real design tools or with real html or real interface design tools when you want to study the or optimize the interaction of the user with that specific element in this case a table but if you only want to understand the, the contents of the table whether these columns are understandable whether the content is enough uh, uh, how, how much content will fit in a page and so on then a simplified version like this is enough so it's they are they really have different goals so the goal here of wireframing is really having something which is quick enough uh, to implement uh, for example also the same is for uh, menus you have a menu element uh, and you just have to to write the names of the elements separated by comma you will create a menu look uh, an element that looks like a menu uh, the same is for vertical drop downs you can write the text so it's all uh, just dragging dropping uh, containers elements and then writing some text free text with, uh, with a very very minimal amount of syntax hmm? and then you can add uh, the interactivity as i said for example you can you in design mode you see these uh, small red arrows that uh, represents uh, like one here one there they're representing links so if i select this menu on the right hand side in the properties there is a links 
elements here they will say okay i wrote three lines here so the first line is a link to another mockup the second line is a link to a different mockup and the third one has no link so you cannot click on the third one so the only action that we can program here is uh, when the user clicks on some in this case line of a menu it will go to a different mockup and the same goes here you can see that the i have a link here that brings me to the the home page basically it's the first mockup when the user is clicking there and another link here in this button so every element could have an associated link uh, also in this case uh, okay we have i created something that looks like a link okay so in the text uh, for example i used uh, the syntax for using them it just square brackets so it's not easy to see at this resolution but it's open and close square brackets and uh, so it understands that i'm trying to put a link in the table it will draw it like a link and will offer me in the property windows here on the right uh, vedi no link so i can actually decide where the, right now it is going nowhere but i can decide where this link is going to to bring you hmm? so it's much faster than writing the same thing in html and much faster than writing that in a, in a design tool you have really, really the essential to just uh, no, uh, draw the wireframe and the basic interaction what is missing is all kind of interactions behind the clicking as we said for example if i had the menu at the beginning i so cancel because you want, it want to say i cannot open and close this menu usually I would cl click or hover on this uh, first level menu and it will open the second level menu and uh, only at that point i will see the content of the menu this cannot be done here in in this in this program in this application the same goes for text entry for example i have uh, a case in which the user must select some items so it can draw the drop down box uh, as an open list uh, so i can fill it in but it will remain open on the screen or i can draw it uh, as closed and it, it remain closed so there's no clicking on the on the arrow to open it and the text input is just a fixed element so the user in uh, we are in design mode but in uh, in a preview mode the user cannot write in there he can only understand that he's going to write something but not really writing so that part of interaction of form filling when you need to input data it's something that cannot be captured uh, uh, with the uh, wireframes what you can capture is the understanding of the form do you understand what you need to do right what are the elements what are the combi the, the legal combination of, of values this can be done the understanding part so the gulf of evaluation but uh, we cannot test uh, the actual usage of the form until we go to design uh, high, high fidelity design where we are we really have real in, uh, elements that maybe they don't do anything so they don't really insert the data into any database because we don't have one but they behave like they do so like so like a form with internal validation internal behavior and the submit does nothing it's only fake mm -hmm. but at least you can test the interaction when the user is trying to enter the text you, you will see what kind of text it would enter so is it too, too large or too small depending on what the user is trying to enter our users hmm? so that's uh, just something that requires uh, more powerful tools than just a wireframe okay but the uh, as, as we say the advantage here is having really this one can be really drawn in two minutes if you try to draw something like that in html it will take you half an hour at least hmm? okay um so going back to or forward to the next chapter yesterday we discussed uh, about what what lies ahead uh, so uh using uh, the requirements that we already extracted we want to start designing so our requirements decided that uh, the application main needs or the the, the, um, the functionality of the application that will solve the main needs of the user is uh, 
I don't know, being able to enter and remind uh, your close friends or whatever. The, the, mm, the birthdays of your friends, maybe. Okay, we know what we need to do, and then it's time to design the how, how to do it, how the application should work. One screen, two screens, and many, on which controls, okay. And so, for doing that, we have three levels of uh, suggestions, okay, that we can use during design. There's one thing we know as, as a programmer. We already know which data we must have in input. So, the first attempt will be, well, let's throw everything in a, in a form and let the user fill it, okay? But maybe it's not the right choice. Maybe we are asking too much information. Not everything is relevant. Not everything is relevant at the moment. Something can be already known. So, uh, before jumping to code, let's try to think about how uh, to make the, the experience of getting information or providing information no, uh, better for the user. And we have these three different levels of suggestion of, of uh, design uh, um, criteria hmm, that we can use. They are called theories, principles, or guidelines. So they are, uh, theories are something that are more abstract. You already saw something about the Norman theory of interaction. Uh, and uh, being more, more abstract, they are also more general because they are more about how the human brain or the perception process works. So they will apply everywhere, whether it's a web application or mobile or just a, 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 um, a, an elevator button. Uh, the criteria, the general theories are the same. Then we can move to the principal level so that they try to distill the theories, which are something very highly theoretical into some design principles okay they are derived from the theories the theory tells us how the brain is working and so there are some design principles that help us design how the system is working so that the system will work in a way that is more compatible with the human brain so there will be uh, less abstract more concrete more practical the principles but at the same time you are using generality because the design principle for an elevator will be different from the design principle of a web application, probably. And even more, when you go to the third level, that this is the level of the guidelines. Guidelines are specific instructions for specific technology. So we will have a look, uh, for example, you know, I don't know, the Apple guidelines for iOS. They will tell you how to use a button in the iOS toolkit. And that will only apply to iOS. If you look at the uh, Apple guidelines for Mac OS, they're different. The button will be different. And if you look at the same for the Google Material Design, well, it's different again. So they will be different uh, concrete incarnation of the pr design principles into specific technology. So guidelines will be easier to follow bec because they really tell you exactly what to do, what elements in some cases guidelines are I also have some snippets of code that will tell you how to get that result practical examples so they're very easy to follow or much easier to follow they are also much wider so if you have maybe 10 design principles you may have 200 uh, design guidelines because they need to cater every single aspect of the design so there are a lot of items uh, to consider many practical and uh, they are not much reusable from one context to the other hmm? but that's the the final end point something that is operative okay operational you can actually act on that right code taken from the guidelines we'll see those hmm? so we have these three levels uh, we go top down uh, really uh, actually bottom up because we start with the more general and go to the more specific so let's start with design theories no is the why i would call that why is the motivations for all the other principles and guidelines something that will help us understand the perceptual psychological mechanism why something is better than something else hmm? why a solution is better than another one uh, they are theoretical so there's not much practical information we can gain so there are mainly big principles we don't uh, 
uh, and there are many theories you know a lot of people is just uh, spending their days uh, in uh, and uh, inventing new theories or new interpretation and so on so uh, in all the world of psychologists and uh, interaction designers and so on there are different types of uh, theories uh, also they change in purpose some theories are descriptive so the goal of the theory is to explain uh, uh, the, the, the the content uh, show describe what is represented by a given interface so it helps the evaluation phase some are explanatory so I try to um, explain why the user is reacting in some way to a given behavior of the system so why does user for example um, one design issue that you all are familiar with when you go to get some money from the atm okay you put your card in you punch some numbers and then the system will give you back two objects your card and the money in which order does this happen card first and money uh, later why otherwise you will forget the card and why will you forget the card the card it's important for you how can you forget something that is so important because your goal no 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 not because the money is more important because your goal was to take the money out so once you have the money your brain resets everything okay i i reached the goal right and so you, you forget that there's something else pending it will require you a conscious effort okay uh, in my car uh, i for opening the the, um, the, the, the gasoline uh, what's tank yes thank you uh, i need to enter the, 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 the ignition key you have the key of the car so it's impossible to forget to replace to close the tank again because otherwise you wouldn't be able to to start the car because the, the, the key will be there so a lot of design uh, issues very simple things uh, uh, are possible because we we understand uh, we can explain why the user will f will forget the the, the 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 atm card or the uh, or the the ignition key of the car because when you reach a goal all uh, okay you are you have a, this, the sense of satisfaction in you that will make you flag the task as done okay uh, and so that we can uh, understand uh, and the the other half of these theories are the prescriptive pa uh, part so instead of trying to explain just why the users behave in a way they will tell us how to design systems in such a way no, that the user will be like behave better or the system will behave better to the user and there are also some predictive theories that are more uh, quantitative in nature so for example they will be able to predict uh, whether it's faster is it faster to select an item from a drop down list or from a list of from a list of uh, radio buttons so i have you need to select uh, whether you was born in spring summer august uh, autumn or winter okay a selection between four choices will i use a, a drop down menu or four radio buttons i want i don't know the answer okay which is faster maybe the radio button are faster because all the options are there but then you move uh, you need to move your finger or mouse or whatever on a larger space uh, um, a draw down menu it, it con condenses the same option in a smaller space but you need to be more precise with the finger so there's also there are models theories that will be able to make you computations we will see one, a couple of laws like that like one, one which is the most famous law yeah, theory uh, predictive theory is the the fits law uh, i will just mention this here then we'll take it uh, when we do the, the actual design the fifth law tells you that the time for um, selecting an element so it talks about selection is uh, proportional to the distance of the element and inversely proportional to the area of the element so something that is 
near and big is easier to select than something that is far and small okay it's not okay it, we could say okay uh, we, uh, it's obvious no it's something that we could have thought but seeing that written so it gives us some some reference and okay okay when it needs uh, something that to be selected quickly and with with no errors i need to make it big and don't put it too far away from the previous interaction point hmm? so why for example in the forms you fill uh, information and then the okay or done or save button is at the bottom there right close to the last field you enter it's not at the top right so there are these practical you know, design issues consequences that come from a theoretical model that we studied people before before our studies and they came out with this suggestion so in many cases we are rediscovering something that we already took for take for granted or we maybe didn't we didn't notice when uh, using everyday objects because they are well designed and there are also the, all these theories also you know uh, uh, deal with different kind of uh, issues so all the cognitive aspects so the understanding from the user or the perceptual aspect being able to see so you know there's the, 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 the difference between perceptual uh, has to do with this human senses uh, sight and hearing basically and also vibration so haptics so what are the capability of human systems to see elements maybe we are dealing with the con color contrast for example so uh, how the color contrast is perceived in function of the line thickness so if you have a very thin line the color is less uh, uh, evident than a, uh, than, a, um, than a thicker line for example so you want to uh, emphasize contrast you must enlarge your thickness that's just one example okay and it has, has to do with the decoration has to do with the fonts uh, sizes and so on and the other aspect is the cognitive how the brain processes all this information that comes from the sensory input so uh, all the interpretation tasks so the different theories uh, try to maybe some are more on the perceptual level some are more on the cognitive levels and some the execution theories are more on the motor aspect so because at the end the user will need to execute some action click a button move a mouse tap somewhere say something and so also this part of the execution is the the other part of the perceptual so the perceptual is getting information and the, the motor is executing uh, actions we already saw one of this theory i won't repeat it here the famous norman theory that uh, okay on, on this model on this mental model it decides or it proposes this uh, a, a seven steps theory that uh, in a way it tries to interpret all the process co going from the including all the sensing the sensory input and the cognitive input and the motor output uh, that will behind will be behind every interaction of the user so that wa is one of them and um, i i will mention a couple more <coughs> just to have the the landscape so we, we won't go into details of those there's this nice uh, descriptive theory uh, that suggests us to interpret uh, an, an interface a, a design interface in four different layers this is a very old theory that he has to do more with text uh, in interfaces but so it, it, if you read the definitions uh, they are about text but they also try they also apply to visual interfaces so there is a uh, conceptual semantic syntactic and lexical level so imagine them as different layers one on top of the other at the bottom you have the lexical levels uh, which is the individual elements of an interface so a button a label a block of text uh, a menu so they are like the, the the single words in our language every interface is composed of widgets of controls of labels decorations images that's all these are the lower level each of them has a meaning if i'm saying a word house it has a meaning by itself it's already a lemma but by itself it doesn't tell you what to do with that element okay it has some capabilities 
a button can be clicked but why what happened so these lexical ele elements are put together with the specific syntax in visual interfaces you may have, have uh, one possible syntax is okay i have a text input box with a label before it and a button on the right the label tells me before means on the to the left or just above it there are rules visual syntax rules that tell us that that piece of text is actually a label for that input because it's closed because the input should have a label and uh, the closest to the left or just above text uh, will have the function of a label and the text should be confirmed in some way you must tell the system that you finished writing the text so confirmation button for the text or maybe for the whole form so there's a syntax there there are rules in which in the order in which the the elements are listed are described so in in the, in the page uh, that tell the user or tell the interface what is uh, the what are the relationships within the, the different lexical elements the OK button confirms what? Confirms all the information that is within a given layout space. It may be the confirmation for the whole page or only for a part of the page if you have a, a, some clear separation, maybe a divider, something that stands out, there's a different background, and the OK button is inside that divider or inside that background. That will tell that the OK applies only to, this, to, the, um, to the divider the section and not to the whole page so again the syntactic rule like we do when when we understand the grammar whether oh, oh is this verb or adjective applied to this subject or to this other subject to the other noun we have rules for that rules are made by commas full stops uh, parentheses and so on and also in visual interfaces we have all these syntactic rules uh, um, on top of that we have the semantic level so a sy syntactic rule says that okay the, the text to the left of an input box uh, an, an input uh, text uh, a text input uh, uh, element uh, is the label at the semantic level the la we, we reason that the label should give the meaning of the content that the user should write so syntactically we know that it's a label but if the label is a b c d it doesn't mean anything the label should tell us the meaning of the information so we can understand a uh, at the syntactic level a user interface in Japanese because we, we recognize labels, buttons, confirmations by the color, by the position, by all the syntactic visual conventions, but we won't be able to understand the semantic level. We don't understand what they are asking for. What's the meaning? Okay, so at that point we make connection between the different elements in the screen and the concept that we have in mind at the semantic level or the meaning of this and of course uh, on top of this there is a conceptual level where we reason about uh, what happens after we insert the data or we select that information so right now we at the semantic level we understand what the interface is telling us or what or what the interface is asking from us but what happens if I enter my data? I am enrolling in some kind of uh, difficult activity or I'm just providing information for uh, a survey? The page doesn't tell you. The page just explains you what information they ask. At the conceptual level, you understand how the application works. You know that the application, I'm just signing up for a website, so I'm, it's first asking my data and then probably will ask me for the actions I need to do or while I will be on board I will need probably to confirm some some data so I know the, the flow of information not just a single page hmm? and it's useful for me to think at, at this different level at least to keep these three separate they come in different times so we analyze them bottom up but the, actually they we are designing them from the top to the bottom so we're, now we're starting to work at what the application is doing how what what is the the design flow and then we start uh, uh, to decide which information to ask uh, 
how to ask it and how to construct the page hmm? and these are really separate skills um, there are some we will use today the word consistency a lot there are consistency theories that try, try to tell you um, or to these are prescriptive theories so they are telling you what to do telling you to be consistent what does it mean to be consistent okay take it to the extreme the extreme consistency would be having only black and white interfaces with a single font size no it's not the kind of consistent everything in the same way everything that has a meaning should be presented in the same way as something else that has the same meaning the same semantics so for example if i have a in the, in the example here in the, in, the, in the corner if i have a text editor uh, i need to add or remove words single characters lines pages or whatever so what kind of word should i use in my buttons in my menu i should use the same words for because the action conceptually at the semantic level inserting a character and inserting a paragraph is insertion is the same concept so it would be nice to have the same consistent naming for semantically equivalent actions i wouldn't see what well, i would like to see insert character and then add word and then create line no because then my brain would ask uh, myself the, the difference between insert and create and add do they have different consequences semantically do they mean something different so in order to convey a semantics we need to be consistent on the syntax and so same colors for some actions red green red is danger red is cancel green is confirmation is okay throughout our all the, all the system all the interface title are big text is small all titles are big all text is, is small huh? so you, you we should understand or decide the semantics of the different elements and to give depending on the kind of information we have decide the style to provide each every information and be consistent with that there are exceptions as we see for example in this example uh, this is the um, project setting page in github so there are a lot of settings it's just a part of the page and all of them are presented in the same way a title a caption explaining the, the meaning of the, of the section that you can read if you don't understand the title so it's a help text uh, related to the title then you have a divider a border with many options inside another title another explanation another border with options inside and every option has a bold uh, title a normal text uh, for the explanation and an action maybe a checkbox maybe a menu and so on except this last one where we see that the the buttons are red instead of black and the border is also red instead of black why because it needs to draw attention danger zone all these operations will make you lose your data all the other ones are reversible you can always go back so this is a way of using an inconsistency to draw attention to something that will behave differently well actually it's a consistency because since this is behaving differently it will it's uh, shown differently so you must use them this uh, actually these tricks uh, sparingly only mm, in a really worldwide exceptions but they really are able with a glance to tell you that there's something different with with the last block with compare with the, to the other four or five previous blocks in this page and we are just played you know a you know, very little attribute if we had this one green the other brown and the other uh, blue 
we would have lost this effect because if there is no general consistency there is no highlighting there is no exception to the rule so first we must set the rule everything is done the same way then once the rule is set we can work on the exceptions okay we are writing code into people's minds you realize with very uh, simple tricks okay these are the for some examples or some hints about all, all the theories are about if you want to read some really boring books there are many of them hmm? but let's go to something more practical so design principles are more practical than theories but still widely applicable instead of guidelines that are more specific right we already saw some fundamental principles we studied them in the need finding section so we uh, in, to avoid many repetitions you will find in the slides this syntax <laughs> the arrow saying okay this is something that is already in the other chapter okay so we don't we, we won't repeat it but we the first thing you said is we need to understand the users are they expert are they novice uh, are they mm, more or less engaged with the activity and so on okay this is also uh, first of all before applying a principle there are some principles that are might be more for uh, that needs to be applied differently depending on the user skills level for example or to the tasks that they want to do mm -hmm. but we, we will focus more on these uh, uh, they, they are called the eight golden rules uh, of interface design so if i find something in the book that is called the uh, eight golden rules it should be important okay because gold is important and in particular one of these is preventing errors which is actually the <laughs> the key to probably 50 percent of the visibility of a system mm -hmm. um, so uh, ah, sorry we, we also mentioned here five primary interaction styles what does it mean that uh, usually when we build the uh, user interfaces huh? at the um, semantic level we have different ways of constructing the interface different languages huh? one is direct manipulation drag and drop your graphical user interfaces when you have uh, objects vi that are visible that can be moved manipulated modified you can change the properties and uh, modifying that object uh, is actually modifying some information inside the system or ordering some actions by the system so actually we have visual proxies that represent uh, something that is Im invisible all the graphical interfaces uh, are uh, usually uh, today are designed in this way huh? uh, you can move you can select you can rename you can and so on um, they are very easy to learn because they can everything is visible you can just have to try and see what happens and see the properties and uh, pop up the menu and see what are the possible actions and so on uh, of course uh, if you want to create a direct manipulation interface for your own application it's a lot of work because you need to create metaphor create icons create conventions and then associate those conventions and then program everything because the user is, is extremely free to work in in a windows environment for example so your application will need to be open to really many different types of, of user actions so it's hard to program so it's worthwhile for platforms basically no? operating systems um, there are menu selection interaction styles so where the user has to select items from menus the, the navigation of most websites is using this kind of, uh, of paradigm uh, some old applications are you know probably the the programs that you wrote in the first year is uh, you print a menu on the screen select one if you want to insert a, date, uh, a value pr uh, press two if you want to uh, to list uh, press three if you want to make the sum and so on it's another it's more constrained way because there, there are a menu but they only can select uh, one uh, one value when the the computer wants if i have a graphical menu i can select i can see the different options and can choose in the order i want okay but the, again we have a uh, a predefined fixed set of uh, options and we must select select among those options that are offered in that specific moment hmm? so it's easy because it gives more control to the application and uh, it's also 
um, easy for the user because it all the all the options are displayed are visible so it's just a matter of choosing the the right one as opposed for example to to common language you know, the command line there's no help in that there's a, a blinking cursor a prompt uh, that challenges you now you need to remember the right command okay of course we are very uh, fluent with the command line interface because for programming tasks because of system administration tasks and so on we in many cases we prefer the command line to direct manipulation if i ever move uh, maybe many folders from one place to another a um, uh, move command is much more efficient than drag dragging hoping to get the right target uh, and then waiting all the uh, time for for all the file transfer okay but of course you need a lot of training on that uh, and uh, higher conceptual understanding of the system so it's only for some specific uh, uh, kind of users that's why it's important to know uh, our users for some users this is totally out for some users it would be the preferred way probably hmm? in some cases in between we have all the forms forms are uh, something that gives some freedom so you can enter some information but it's constrained and validated by the system so the system is guiding you to enter in this information you can enter fl more flexibly than just selecting commands insert my name yes uh, no i have a form you can choose uh, and the system will help you will give you help you will validate will uh, tell you that something mi is missing it's too long it's too short it doesn't have enough uh, capital letters or whatever hmm? and and so for web applications mainly menu selection and forms are the two key interaction methods we probably you can maybe try put a bit of direct manipulation that if it's really needed because it's a lot of effort hmm? natural language whether it's text or voice uh, would be another type of uh, interaction that is now gaining a lot of ground so in also in our application we will put some some of that uh, and uh, uh, just try to be uh, very low on expectations so the user should not expect uh, to be able to speak fluently to an interface or to have everything understood hmm? so it's an, our interface will be a mix of these styles usually um, about uh, general principles uh, we have uh, some uh, very wide principles that are, der are derived directly from the from the normal model okay this is something is already we uh, we mentioned the state and the action alternative should be visible so this is a design principle so m make sure that the state of the system is already visible do you have new mail the, the no the system knows that how do you know that how the system showing to you this information hmm? there are maybe a, a thousand options of how to convey this information the important thing is that the user should know should be able to get this information what is the state of the system and what are the action alternatives what can it do with that information hmm? the two key points to enable the interaction the cycle of interaction and you should design a good conceptual model with a consistent system image okay uh, at the conceptual level but also at the syntax level so the interface should include good mapping mappings that relieve the relationship between the stages so it's there are many concepts that are similar to previous ones so different uh, researchers frame that in different words uh, uh, but they basically mm, all are grounded to the same concepts and another principle is that the user should always receive continuous feedbacks so never leave the user in a state where he doesn't know if direction was accepted or not was confirmed or not was saved or not or ca was cancelled or not when the user does something the system will always need to tell the user at least that the command was received or the information was received maybe not executed yet but at least received okay there's nothing worse that pressing a button and then pressing it twice and three times and 15 times because it didn't tell you immediately and immediately i mean 100 milliseconds 150 no more than that 200 is too much 
hmm? because it will the user will perceive a lag okay uh, this is the answer I, I, if something when you switch light on here it's immediate at least if i switch it off it's immediate if i switch it on it takes some time but i'm not worried because it clicks i know i pressed it because it clicks so i can wait if it was perfectly silent like with touch interfaces i touch it wait uh, uh, did you how many seconds are they half a second five six hundred milliseconds probably hmm? so it's a long time very long time for us for interaction but i already received a feedback click so i know the command was received sooner or later the light will come if it doesn't come then there's a problem but the problem would not be the button okay it's small tricks if something is taking a long time and half a second is a long time in interaction you should give a feedback immediately hmm? and then the user will be happy to have not happy but aware that it should wait when you the same is when you call for a lift for an elevator you press the button and the elevator will come sooner or later in that case maybe minutes but the, the button will become red or light up immediately okay i don't know if you go the, the traffic lights around here the uh, polytechnic from zone polytechnic on porta and so on uh, the, um, the pedestrian traffic lights have a button okay if you press that button it will light up and then the light will go out after three or four seconds i don't know did you ever notice and so you don't know okay i press it lights up so in my mind uh, i see that uh, the system understood that they want to cross the street and then the lights go off what does it mean that the system forgot my request do i need to press it again or maybe just or you already remember that so there's no longer necessary to keep it light on what does it mean it's only create problems and the second person will come and see it black uh, we see it uh, switch off uh, and we look at you you stupid you didn't press the button i need to press it and you and you see them say man no, you stupid i press that okay so you are trying to blame yourself well the, uh, the only uh, object to blame is the button in the, on the tram or on the train it works differently once you press it it stays light until the doors open when the purpose by which you press the button initially is fulfilled so why couldn't the button stay lit uh, until the lights come become green the question has no answer okay it should so it's sort of uh, communicating to the user the state of the system the system understood and then the system is ready to serve you with their own time it needs time to bring an elevator it brings time to change the traffic light but you know that the system is talking to you and you are exchanging it's transparent to you hmm? and uh, okay on the right side you, you might have some example of what, what may happen if this principle are not uh, uh, observed but let's go to the eight golden rules that are more detailed than this general principle this general principle is so is so strong is so general that you see it everywhere but it can be divided you know, in these eight rules again consistency this is one of the bosses here uh, try to be consistent uh, whenever you can you can have a sort of uh, is not in the slide but uh, of internal consistency internal consistency means that different parts of your application should be consistent with each other different parts of the same page different pages and so on you should select a style and follow it and there's also external consistency where your application conventions 
should be consistent with other websites okay the nielsen law of usability says that 90 uh, percent of the time your users are using other websites not yours so whenever you do something in the same way that everybody else does you are helping your user because they don't have to learn a new way they just can use whatever convention whatever knowledge they already have if you are doing something a different way maybe you, you have your own reasons but be aware that you are asking for the user to learn a different way hmm? maybe it's better hmm. i don't know remember that it's very unlikely that you are the only genius no, among the um, thousands of other designers that are following a convention maybe you really are uh, the genius and so you are designing something that will be disruptive and everybody will adopt next year but it's unlikely so let's start <laughs> with something that it's more no so the the idea of consistency is that uh, the same I, I i'm saying different words what is equal at the conceptual level should be also equal at the syntactic level so similar situations should lead to similar user interfaces sequences of actions and so on uh, if deleting uh, uh, an, uh, an item should require two steps one for asking to delete and the other for confirmation then every time you need to delete something you will always need to have two steps because otherwise the users will not understand whether they really deleted it or not because in many cases you have two steps in some cases you have one step and is that one step enough hmm? for example uh, be consistent with the terminology so in the menus the prompt the help text uh, calling same things with same names hmm? don't use uh, synonyms of close words of uh, you know, something that in a, in a prose text will be helpful to, to avoid repeating the same word over and over again it will be boring in a prose text but in an interface no and it's better to be consistent than to be uh, ambiguous uh, and the same goes for all the other graphical attributes Okay, we saw the example of the colors in the in the github page except uh, when maybe there are some actions uh, that uh, require to be treated in a different way basically the for example the delete actions should be more prominent than the other reversible actions uh, where you are writing a password you don't want to give a uh, a password tag a field that should not behave in the same way as a text field because the text field is visible the password field should be hidden away hmm? so in that case it's always a, a string of text but should behave differently so there are exceptions but there are few and limited hmm? uh, about universal usability oh, okay uh, it's a term which is very br broad saying that uh, the interface should be usable by everybody everybody including uh, all kind of variations of, of people that you can that you can imagine uh, one particular case of universal design is accessibility so accessible to people with disabilities mm? we'll have a separate chapter on that because it's a more specific topic mm? but basically uh, most of what we are saying goes also in this direction but you have novice users and expert users they both using your system the system should not, not be identical to the two an expert user wants to see more options and novice user doesn't want to be confused by many options so you must have a system that should adapt to them maybe with a show and hide button where they uh, with a very uh, non-intrusive uh, layout so then the novice user will not care will not see the more button but the expert user will look for it so we have a sort of uh, uh, two levels of, uh, of interaction probably uh, young versus elderly hmm? there's a lot of uh, how teenagers use the technology is different from 70 years people hmm? not so different but uh, um, and also depending on your target users your design uh, rules will be, di will be different whether your system will be used uh, in a web or a mobile settings 
again the system this in this case we call them responsive design uh, what pages that are able to change also radically their layout to adapt to a different size of the viewport so maybe you have a uh, website and when you see that website on the mobile uh, a lot of content will be moved down a lot of content will be deleted uh, and the icons will be made larger and so on but we are not creating two different websites uh, only one that through a lot of css sorceries will uh, adapt automatically you know, to, to the different sizes mm -hmm. so it's it's a hard task to do but uh, it, it gives you this kind of usability mm -hmm. the same functions presented in a different way mm -hmm. you may have international variations or, or cultural variations stupid things the date format the date format should adapt to the language of the interface month year day or year month day or mo uh, day month year hmm? there are the three there should be six permutations but uh, fortunately we only have to deal with three uh, and this is just the, the tip of the iceberg okay about uh, uh, adapting interface okay once it's translating the interface but that's easy expensive but easy I mean, all the strings translated into a different language. But there's all, all the assumptions, uh, 12, 12 hours clock or 24 hours clocks. Metric versus imperial, or all kind of, uh, if you want to have an international uh, uh, set of users, you should personalize the websites uh, to them. Hmm? Um, okay. Third principle, offer feedback, informative feedback, of course, not useless feedback, but something that for every human action, there should be an interface feedback. Every, all of them. It may be a very subtle feedback, nearly invisible. <coughs> we don't hear the clicks. Okay, we hear them, we don't perceive them. When we go and use the live switches, we are not aware of the click well at a in at the, at the unconscious level we are we hear them we process them huh? but it's a very uh, subtle feedback very not non-invasive just a small sound that will okay tell us that the action is completed because the action is stupid it's simple it's fast so we need a, a stupid and simple feedback if the action is more important i buy something on uh, e-commerce website the feedback will be much stronger one page with a confirmation one email to my inbox telling me that uh, the operation has been completed so it's something that takes a lot of more space and attention because there's more important information to give me it's a feedback so something that happens after the fact yeah you already completed that action and the system is telling me that the action was completed correctly the more important the action is the stronger the feedback should be so in some cases it would be just maybe when i press a button the button will just change their shadow or in over in a link or clicking a link the link will change colors you know, from blue to purple but the very small change but it will tell me that I, the click has been done correctly hmm? so we see those feedbacks everywhere um, okay so there's a lot of uh, small design details again that we might not be aware but we, we should we should use them and luckily all the graphical tool toolkits that we can, we can use already implement these functionalities so don't create your own button with an image because your own button will lack a lot of small subtle feedbacks it will not become raised when the mouse is over it will not become sunk when the mouse is pressed it will not change color when the action is being done huh? a button has probably seven or eight different states according to the stage of the interaction for a single click 
all the graphical tool toolkits already do that so we take it for, for granted but if you if you if you try to replace remember consistency if you're trying to replace something standard with something custom you need to recreate all the assumptions all the uh, behavior that the user takes for, for granted otherwise you are losing consistency with how the rest of their computer is working uh, yes um, especially in the case of errors this is an example that happened to me yesterday okay or some days ago last week I wanted to install the last, latest version of uh, Visual Studio Code. Okay, nothing special. But I didn't want it to install in the user directory because, uh, you know, nowadays all the programs tend to install themselves into the user slash update slash they hide themselves deep under uh, uh, hidden directories. Uh, but I hate that. So I will try to install the programs directly in the program files uh, folder. Mm. Is there for a reason, no? um and so in many cases the setup program if you execute that as a privileged user as the administrator it will write install the program in the program files otherwise it will install that for a single user okay so i want to do that so this is a normal it's a behavioral pattern i learned that in setup program you try always to execute them as administrator in some cases uh, is they already do that by the themselves they ask you do you want to install for this user or for, or for all the users on these machines we just do the code that doesn't do that so i try to activate it explicitly right and then it will give me an error and the error says that uh, this user installer installer is not meant to be run as an administrator and that's the error but if you'd like to install uh, vs code for all users download the system installer instead so it's not just telling me something's wrong it's also telling me how to correct it this is the important thing. otherwise i would have if we would have stopped here like 99 percent of error messages what i should do now how can i correct that so if the user is wrong tell them how they can be right how they can correct themselves what is an alternate way of reaching the same goal in a way that there was a clever designer here that understood anticipated that some user like me wanted to execute this action and so he said okay if this happens i'll tell this to the user so i'm trying to anticipate this error. i don't know whether the designer was clever enough or during the test trials some users try to do that and so they discovered during trials that the users has that mental model of installing programs in mind hmm? so this i think it's a great lesson at the at the end i downloaded another uh, program which is vs code setup which is that is different from vs code user setup i would have never guessed that user meant that okay it's just a name hmm? you don't care you care more about the version number than the name probably hmm? so this uh, i think it's a great lesson here uh how many times together with an error message we are also suggesting the resolution hmm? i remember from the early early days i don't know if the, you're, you're probably young uh, too young to remember this this message redo from start did you ever see it good for you and uh, it was a message that basic interpreters basic hmm, printed out when uh, they try to read uh, um, a number and you inserted a text a string instead so the, of course at that time at those times there was not much uh, fuss about user interface and inter interaction and so on and so if your program was expecting a number and you typed in some text the error message was question mark redo from start and then it printed a question mark again 
so there was a question mark that was generated by the input the question mark that was part of the error and the question mark for expecting the real answer but it didn't tell you that it redo from start or insert a number should be a, a the real error message a number is expected of course the basic interpreters are, had only so many kilobytes of memory to, to work with so they were minimal and uh, so this are as a bad example of an error message redo from start what and the start of what of everything of the, of the last input uh, or my life uh, as, uh, hmm? okay so let's try to be more like vs call and less like uh, the older versions of basics hmm? but by the way it took me probably four or five years to understand uh, redo because in italian uh, we are at that time there was no italian version of, of anything so the understanding redo the dead redo i read that as redo and uh, didn't understand what uh, what it meant but it's a different story okay uh principle number four design dialogues to yield uh, closure dialogue not just in the sense of a dialogue window but a sequence of actions right eh? so every sequence of action should have a beginning an end and a development sign up to a new website the beginning is i ask to sign up then there's a lot of screens and there should be an end where i'm aware and that have been confirmed that my information has been registered <laughs> and that point the user is satisfied he has the sense of satisfaction that this task is completed in a way people we <laughs> have a working memory during execution execution of tasks right so we know that a task is made of several steps and we remember the information from step to step and we know what is the next step to go forward and at the end we know that the this is the last step and completes the task so all the information that we kept in mind during the intermediate steps is no longer needed and so it can be deleted how many times how many times did they tell you a number telephone number you typed it in because, so you remember that okay i tell you a number you type it in you call the person one second later I ask you what was the number you don't remember it anymore but you just entered that you remember that but you already used that so you were aware that the reason why you were trying to it's hard remembering numbers why you trying to stick the number in your, in your mind the reason was already was already satisfied was already done so you could delete the number from your memory like the the card from the atm uh, machine you have the money you don't need it to remember other other details that the card is still inside it's a detail the main important point calling the person getting the money has already been reached so it's important to identify very clearly which is the end of the task it's has been done data has been saved the search the mail has been sent and so you know that the user will go back to the home state of their interaction this is closed i can think as of something else and they will keep in mind that the user will forget about the details of what they did um, so we should design our website not in pages but in tasks and tasks are sequences of pages uh, we should be clear when the user is asking for a new action for entering for initiating a new task and when this new task is complete because again we are engaging with the user's memory with the user intentions and we need to follow follow them hmm? and guide them through the different steps so development can be short or can be long maybe we are searching something so the beginning is just entering the search keyword and clicking enter 
and the end is showing the results so development actually is invisible in this case nearly instantaneous but then when you see the results you know that the search is over or if the um, search takes a longer time then in, in, in the intermediate step you are giving feedback maybe a uh, some animation that tells you okay i'm still working so the user knows that the start the task has been started that the system is working even if the user has, no, has nothing to do in this stage only wait and then we have the end so every time hmm, you should the, the, the most important thing is uh, be clear to when the user is initiating a new action and when the user is closing the new the, the action you are posting a new picture to instagram you have a sequence of different uh, you can um, make the effect add some text add the eye contact people and so on but at the end you publish it and then it's over mm -hmm. and you know where to start it you know how to, when it's ended and you know that there may be many steps that most of them are, are optional of course but you are inside that you are remembering which image you, to whom you want to send it and why you want to send it when you send when you click on the sending it's over all of that is not important anymore the task is complete okay so every dialogues sequences of screens sequences of forms uh, are a way to create a concrete path for user mental tasks okay we we saw the first four uh, rules uh, and uh, of course we need to wait until next week uh, to see the the other ones hmm? so that you can go to lunch <laughs>